a mapping or a transformation. So we take when we have y is equal to f of x. So y is, y is a function of x. What this means is that we have a rule by which the set x is mapped or transformed into the set y. So we denote this by f colon and then x into y. So these are arrow indicates the mapping or transformation. And our f tells us the rule of this mapping or transformation. So when you have the function such as y is equal to f of x, our x in this case is the argument of the function and the y is called the value of the function. Also, our x can also be called the independent variable and the y can be called the dependent variable. So when we look at our x and we consider all the permissible values that x can take for any given situation, we call this the domain of the function. And the y value into, uh, when we take the dif these different x values, the set of images that the y value can take is called the range of the function. So the domain relates to x, which we said is our independent variable or the argument, and the range relates to our y, which we say is a dependent variable or the value of the function. So this is what we are saying. When you have y is equal to f of x, y Okay, so I hope I'm back. Yes. So X is an independent variable, and it is also the argument of the function. And then all the possible values that X can take, given the context we are considering, they are called the domain of the function. So at um, one or two examples. In the first example, we are told that the total cost C of a firm per day is a function of its daily output. And this daily output is Q is equal to, or C is equal to 150 plus 7Q. And we are told that the firm has a capacity limit of 100 units of output per day. And the question is, what are the domain and the question is what cost the domain and pay? Somebody's mic is on, you need to mute your mic. Okay. So to consider this, we're told that the firm has a limit of 100 units of output per day. So in this case, the C is the cost and the Q is the output. So we have a function which is given as C is equal to 150 plus 7Q. So in this case, if we relate to it to what we examined before, Y is equal to F of X. So in this case, our Y or our independent variable is C and our X 
or dependent variable is Q. So we are told, so we are told to find the domain arrangement. Remember, we said that the domain is given our current context. The domain represents the set of possible values that our x or that a dependent variable can take. So in this case, we are told from the question that there's a capacity limit of 100 units of output per day. So this tells us that our domain is a set of values for output ranging between zero and 100. So we can represent this as Q, given Q is greater than or equal to zero, and Q is less than or equal to 100. So when we move to the second part, the range, we say that our range represents the set of possible values that our Y or that our independent variable can take, considering the given values of X or considering the given values of our dependent variable. So in this case, coming from our domain, we know that the minimum value of our X or of our Q is zero, and the maximum value of X or Q is 100. So when, when our Q is zero, we substitute Q into our function. Our function is C is equal to 150 plus seven Q. So when Q is zero, our C will be equal to 150 plus seven times zero, which is 150. And then for the maximum, C is equal to 150 plus seven Q. In this case, the maximum Q is 100. So our C will be equal to 150 plus seven times 100. This will be 150 plus 700, which will be 850. So our range, which gives us the possible values that our independent variable can take. In this case, our independent variable is total cost C, will be given by C, where C is greater than or equal to 150, and C is less than or equal to 150. So if we look at another example, we are told here that if the domain of the function y is equal to 5 plus 3x, is a set x given that x is greater than or equal to 1 and x is less than or equal to 4. We are told to find the range of the function and express it as a set. So similar to what we did before, we examine the minimum and maximum values of our y, given the minimum and maximum values of our x. So from the example, we're already told that our domain or the possible range of values of x is x is greater than or equal to one, or x is less than or equal to four. So what this tells us is that the minimum value for our x is one, and the maximum values for our x is four. So we can plug this into our function. So when our x is one, which is the minimum value, we can also find the minimum value of y. So our, our y will be five plus three times one. And then it will be five plus three, which is eight. So that's the minimum value of y. And the maximum value of y will be when our x is equal to four. So our y will be five plus three times four. And then y will be 17. So in this case, the range, you can't hear. Can you hear or you can't hear? I'm saying something. We can hear you, sir. We can hear you, sir. We can hear me. We can hear you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. So, 
in this case, the range will be y, given that y is greater than or equal to 18, and y is less than or equal to 17. So, we can look at another example, which says that in this case, we have a function, y is equal to minus x squared. And we're told that the domain is a set of all non-negative real numbers. And so we're told to find the range. So in this case, if it's a set of all non-negative real numbers, then the minimum value will be when x is zero and the maximum value will tend to infinity because you can know uh, there are so many numbers that are positive real numbers. So in this case, our range will be that we have y, given that y is greater than or equal to zero. So we can have uh, different dimensions of the, uh, different oh. questions, looking at different dimensions of relations and functions. Okay, so we move to uh, uh, types of functions. Excuse me, sir. Since, yes. Yeah. So can, I'm raising my hand. Can you recap the explanation for y equal to a minus x squared? I don't get that very well, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. So we are told that the domain is a set of all real numbers that are not negative. Okay. So remember that if something is if something is squared, then by the time we square it, it will become positive. So when we say that uh, uh, minus one squared, it becomes plus one. Two. Yes, when we say minus two squared, it becomes plus two. four. So when we square it, our value of y will be positive. So that's why yes, in this case, our range will be anything greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Okay, so, so types of functions. Um, when we say we have a function y is equal to f of x, what this function basically tells us, like we said before, is that we have a rule by which our set x is mapped into our set y. Okay, so sometimes, or, or this is general, unless it is explicitly specified, like we saw in the different examples. We don't know, we don't yet know the actual rule of mapping, okay? Now, in order to know the actual rule of mapping, then we need to consider the different types of functions. So which is what we're going to do now. So we can have different ones. The first one, we say we have a constant function. Okay, and for a constant function, it has only one element. So we have two examples here. We have y is equal to four and y is equal to two. So for a constant function, when you have different values of x, our value of y remains the same. Okay, so you know, different examples in economics can be either autonomous investment or autonomous consumption. So we have an horizontal line where our y takes on the same value irrespective of different values that x can take. Okay, so the second type is what we call polynomial functions. And for polynomial functions, we have a multiple terms, which can be expressed in different powers. So for example, what we have, we have y is equal to a naught, 
Plus A1A. 